Hello everyone, welcome to the video on volumetric analysis. In this video, I will explain about a titration, the terms and definitions we come across in titrations, the popular indicators used in the titrations, and in this video, I will explain in detail about acid-based titrations. This is my YouTube channel, just type in my name, Jaisairajish in YouTube, you will get all the videos. If you like the video, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. Now, what is a titration is? See, a titration is a technique where a solution of known concentration is used to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. Let us understand this. See, the solution of known concentration is known as titrant. That means you know the concentration of that particular titrant. Now, the, the reason why titration is carried out is to know the concentration of analyte. Now, the solution whose concentration is to be determined is known as an analyte. Analyte is taken in this conical flask and the solution whose concentration we already know is taken in this burette. So, the titrant, we know the concentration of that solution is added from a burette of a known quantity of analyte. Analyte means unknown solution. Now, how do we determine uh, uh, the concentration of this analyte by using this formula MAVA equal to MBVB. Now understand this, see titrant 1 are related to MAVA. M means molarity of titrant, that means concentration of titrant, we already know it. V means volume of the titrant added, how much volume is run down into this burette. Now volume of analyte we already know because we have taken certain amount, certain volume of analyte in this conical flask. By using this we, you can find out the concentration of analyte by using this formula. So this is how the concentration of this analyte is find out. The basic purpose of titration is to find out the concentration of analyte. Now the end point is determined by using an indicator. Indicator gives a color change when the neutralization takes place. Let's dig a little bit details. So titrant is a solution of known concentration which is added to another solution whose concentration has to be determined. So titrant is this one, you know the concentration and it is added through a burette. Now, what is a titrant or analyte? Uh, think about this analyte. Analyte is the solution whose concentration has to be determined and it is already there in the volumetric flask. Now, the next one, what is an equivalence point? See, the point in titration at which the amount of titrant added is enough to completely neutralize the analyte solution. Imagine this thing, let's say analyte you have taken HCl and from the burette you have started adding NaOH. Neutralization takes place, what happens with this? NaCl will form and water will form. So when HCl concentration is equals to NaOH at that particular point of time, the neutralization takes place and you get salt. So what happens at that? At that point, moles of the base will be equivalent to moles of the acid, the concentration. So once you get this equivalence point, you use the formula M1V1 equal to M2V2 and find out the concentration of analyte. This point is known as equivalent. The neutralizing point is known as equivalence point. Now at that point, what happens? The concentration of base will be equivalent to concentration of acid. Now, there is another thing, end point. End point refers to a point at which indicator changes the color in acid-based titration. There is a slight difference is there. End point is the point at which indicator shows a color. Equivalent point means the volume at which moles of base will be equivalent to moles of acid. Now, these two, if these two values are close enough, then the titration will be accurate. Accurate means the closeness of our experimental value with true value. That is what is accuracy is. Now, in acid-based titrations, uh, the titrations are monitored by change of pH as the titration progress. Now, change of pH can be visibly determined by using indicators. Indicators will show a different color when the pH is changed. Now look at this. This is what a general titration setup is. You have a burette wherein you have a titrant is there. Now what is titrant? We know the concentration of titrant and we know the volume of uh, the titrant because this is what is the volume. You drop down that and you figure out how much ml is required to neutralize that analyte one. The next one is analyte or titrant. You know the volume but concentration is not in. That is what is to be determined. See how much volume is taken we already know and it is taken in a conical flask. Our job is to find out the concentration of this analyte. 
Now, some other terminology. So, standard solution means a solution is one whose concentration is precisely known. So, the titrant is also known as a standard solution because you know the concentration. Test solution means is the one whose concentration is to be estimated. The analyte solution is also known as test solution. So, depending upon the textbooks, the titrant is also called a standard solution, whereas an analyte is also called a test solution. Now, look at this. A titration curve is the plot of pH of the analyte solution. See, we'll be taking in conical flask, you take analyte. Right? When, when from the burette a titrant is added, the pH will be changed. And this pH is plotted here versus the volume of titrant added. How much volume is added is taken in the x axis. The pH change is plotted on y axis. So then you get a curve. The curve is known as titration curve. Now look at this. See, simple titrations. Titrations can be classified as acid-based titrations, redox titrations, precipitation titration and complexometric titration. Now, in this video, I will explain about acid-based titrations. Now, when you see about acid-based titrations, you need to know about strong acids, weak acids, strong base and weak, weak bases. Now, strong acids, we have hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid. Weak bases, acetic acid, hydrofluoric acid and oxalic acid are there. Now, strong bases, sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide and lithium hydroxide, whereas weak bases, ammonium hydroxide and ammonia. So, see, all these four, either one can be taken as a titrant or analyte. Now, our job is to find out the concentration of analyte by using a neutralization reaction. Now, acid-based titrations, the reaction progression neutralization can be monitored by using pH changes. pH changes can be indicated by indicators. Now, the job of indicator is whenever there is a change in pH, it changes color. The two most popular one are methyl orange. Now, see, methyl orange at neutral pH, it remains as such in orange color. In acidic pH, look at the color. It changes to red, red color, red and orange color. Whereas in base pH, again, it, it remains as orange color. So, whenever you do a titration, if the titration equivalent point is at acid pH, methyl orange can be used because it immediately changes its color. By visibly observing that color, you can determine that equivalent point. The other one, phenophthalene. Now, at neutral pH, the color remains same. In acidic pH, also it remains same. In base pH, it turns to pink in color. So, when you, when you perform a uh, titration, if the equivalence point at the base pH, phenophthalene can be used. Look at this. If the equivalence point is at acidic pH, methyl orange can be used. If the equivalence point is at base pH, phenophthalene can be used. Now, let us see the types in acid-based titrations. So, as I told you, this video, I will in detail explain about acid-based titrations. Now, why do we call it as acid-based titration? Because the titrant and the analyte is acid and base. That is the reason why we call it as acid-based titrations. Now, let us see a typical one. Now, this one, what is sodium hydroxide? Sodium hydroxide is a strong base. What is HCl? It is also a strong acid. So, this titration is strong base versus strong acid titration. Now, in this titration, the amount of HCl concentration is to be find out. So, it is called as an analyte. Whereas, the sodium hydroxide concentration is already known and it is taken in burette, it is called as a titrant. Now, when the when this titration is going on, look at this titration curve. See, the volume of titrant added is taken in x axis. So, how much ml is getting added is taken in this axis. The pH change of analyte solution is taken in y axis. So, at the beginning, look at this. The pH will be an acidic pH. Why? HCl pH is acidic pH. When the titrant is being added, the pH slowly raises. At one point, you can see a sharp rise in pH. This thing is sharp rise in pH. Look at this. At 50 ml, roughly at 50 ml, there is a sharp rise in pH. pH from 3, it rises till 11 pH. So, this point, the middle of the point is known as equivalence point. So, what is that equivalence point? Exactly 7. Strong acid, strong base. When they neutralize, the neutralization occurs at exactly pH 7. So, this is how the titration is carried out. Now, look at the indicators. See, the equivalence point at this 
this one so this is what the 7 is the equivalence point the rapid rise in ph is there from 3 to 11 ph from 3 ph to 11 ph so look at the indicators methyl orange changes its colors when the ph changes from 3 to 4 whereas phenolphthalein changes color when ph changes from 8 to 10 so both the indicators can be used because see the ph changes here so both of them will show a different color so any any one of the indicator can be used to determine equivalence point so the ph at which the color change is called as end point so this is about strong base strong acid uh, titration the next type see again you have taken a strong base but here it is a weak acid so this is the titration between strong base versus weak acid now see what happens see weak acid ph is plotted here right strong base is started adding here and the volume is taken on x axis now again the weak acid ph will be at here now when the neutralization is taking place because of the base the sudden rise in ph occurs at this ml so what happens the ph change will be from here to here so between 5 and 11 ph a sharp rise in uh, ph will be there so the equivalent point will be this thing which is nothing but 9 right so this is about strong base and weak acid titration now look at them so at this ph because you are using a strong base the sharp ph rise will be in the base region that is between 8 to 10 the equivalence point is at 9 so you can use indicator phenolphthalein to determine the end point you cannot use methyl orange because it is out of range it is from 3 to 4 you cannot use it so the equivalent point occurs between 7 to 11 so the best one is phenolphthalein now another type the next type of acid based titration is between this between a, i'm sorry this is a weak base between weak base versus this is a strong acid strong acid so again when the equivalence point uh, when they see the titration curve at the beginning the ph will be acidic when the neutralization starts it rises and comes here now look at them because it is a strong acid the equivalence point will be in acidic ph so it is around 5 now look at the indicators 3 to 5 range methyl orange can be used phenolphthalein is out of range 8 to 10 you cannot use this indicator to know the end point so only indicator which can be used here is methyl orange so by using methyl orange you can see the change in color stop the rundown amount and calculate the concentration of analyte the last one see the problem with weak acid and weak base titration says see the equivalent point is is at here see this is what is the equivalent point but see see this is not a sharp rise in ph you can see the curve it just goes like this so it is not a unlike the previous experiments wherein you see a sharp rise in ph that sharp rise is not found in weak acid weak based titration so both the indicators are out of range you cannot use both of the indicators that is why this reaction uh, the titration between weak acid and weak base is not carried out in titrations because you don't have a good indicator now see this is the uh, this is how a titration is carried out initially the titrant is taken in burette analyte is taken in conical flask when see if we need to add the titrant drop by drop and we need to shake that conical flask it gives a faint color because of the indicator you slowly need to add you slowly need to add the titrant with continuous shaking and that gives a kind of end point if your rundown volume is more it gives its dark color which may which is too far of that end point so this is how titration of acid bases are carried out so thank you for watching this video if you like the video do subscribe and share the video